Op Center advanced techniques. In uh, today's session, I'm going to talk about the more advanced uh, stuff regarding Op Center. Uh, in the morning session, Alan Nemec kind of talked about the basics uh, on how to kind of get your Op Center set up um, and kind of create field names and go from there. Uh, today, I'm going to take a uh, deeper dive into that um, and go from there. Uh, today's topics, we're going to go over the land tab, work planner, analyze, and field analyzer. Okay, so on land, uh, and I will bring it up here. In land, if you go to setup, land, once this loads up, this is where you can edit. If it if it ever loads, uh, this is where you can edit your field names, edit your boundaries, edit your guidance signs, and edit your flags. You can also add fields, add boundaries, add guidance signs, and add flags. You can also archive all those. I'll kind of show you all those uh, right now. So like in the morning session, Al Nemba kind of showed you guys how to add a field. And if you don't know how to add a field, refer to that morning meeting and uh, he'll show you how to use those. Um, for an example, I'm just going to go to one of our test farm fields. And I'm going to go to Teeny 140. So if I want to make any changes to this field, there's this little arrow here. All you have to do is click on that little arrow. From there, you can change the field name. Just simply click on the field and change it to whatever you want. So you can see that I did underscore one. I'm just going to backspace out of that. Um, you can change the client. You can change uh, the farm. You can change the active boundary and the base station. Next, uh, I'll show you kind of how to uh, add boundaries. So I'm going to uh, add a boundary here, and I'm going to do a create a boundary from previous operation. So I'm going to hit the yellow add button, select boundary here, and I'm going to do from previous operation. Hit next. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a list of operations that were done to this field. And I'm going to actually use the seeding soybean map from May 10th, 2021, because I just think that maybe is the most accurate out of all the maps. And I'm just going to name this 2021 underscore seeding. And if you scroll down here, it gives you actually a uh, a picture of what the boundary should look like, and it's very very similar to the boundary that's already in the system. I'm gonna hit save. So now we have two boundaries in the system, and it defaulted as the new seeding boundary is the new active boundary. So active meaning that's what's gonna show up in op center. And that's the boundary that's going to be in your setup file if you select boundaries in your setup file. But what I'm going to uh, point out here is this 2021 seeding map is 138.71 acres. Uh, this RTK boundary is 137.83 acres. So what we did with this RTK boundary is we actually hooked up an RTK receiver to one of our integrated solutions pickups, and we drove the field boundary with that. So as you can see here, there's about an acre difference in between the two fields. And you're probably thinking, hey, that's probably not a big deal. But with all this autonomous stuff coming down the pipeline, uh, the work planner tool, and all the new features in Op Center, the more accurate your boundary can be, the better. Because you can also use these boundaries for boundary track. So you can create 
it more or less creates a guidance line around the whole field and you can use that in your tiller equipment or planter or whatever you want to do and it more or less drives the boundary for you so you no longer have to uh, manually drive the outside of the boundary. So next I'm going to just uh, show you kind of how to archive this boundary. If you just want to select this boundary, up here you'll see an archive, copy, export, and merge. I'm going to just archive this boundary, hit the archive, archive, and next you'll see that this RTK boundary is still inactive. So what I want to do here is select this little arrow. This is where you can change the boundary name, change the boundary details from active to inactive, and we're going to go inactive to active. Hit save. And we are good to go. Um, one thing I will note is let's say uh, you want to merge a two boundaries together. You just hit this merge button and it more or less asks you, hey, which field do you want to associate this with? Select the field that you want. Select the boundary that you want to merge it to, hit save, and you'll have two merge fields. All right, getting back to the PowerPoint. So I kind of went over this already. Uh, this is regarding the boundaries of how to change change the shape uh, uh, new boundary uh, archive of boundary uh, the one thing I didn't show you and I will show you here is uh, how to change how to edit the shape of the boundary I'm gonna go back into boundaries here hit this arrow again I'm gonna select inside this boundary see how all these uh yellow or uh, white dots showed up around the field what these white dots can do is you can select these dots move them over to where you kind of want them to be or these grayed out dots you can select one of those and they'll become active dots and you can move them wherever you want Or let's say you got a tree grow out here. You can actually select the area that you want the where the tree grove is at. Hit select that. And you can come over here, select shape two. You can do an interior, and we're gonna do just a passable boundary. Actually, we're gonna change that to impassable. Uh, so next, what you can also do, let's say this uh, farmyard was not in here. What you can do is select, use the select points tool, select the points that you don't want. See how all these dots turn black? What you can do is hit the trash can delete points, and now that got rid of the farm yard. So that's kind of how you can uh, edit your boundaries if you want, but I'm just going to cancel out of all this and go back to the RTK boundary, being when you know that this is the most accurate boundary out there for this field, but go from there. Pull up the PowerPoint again here. So next we'll go over uh, tracks and just like boundaries, you can edit the track name, you can edit point A or point B, you can edit the track spacing or the length. Uh, you can add a new track so you can actually add a new straight track A, B line or circle track. We don't really use a lot of circle tracks around here, but you can definitely use straight tracks. 
archive, copy, or export out tracks. Let me get over to Op Center again. So I'm going to simply click on guidance here, and here are all our guidance tracks from this year. And what we actually did was, like what I mentioned earlier, we actually took a pickup out there and drove this boundary. And when I was driving this boundary, I actually created the guidance tracks with this boundary. So I'm going to edit this East 21 guidance line. I'm going to hit this arrow again. That arrow is going to be your best friend. And this is where you can edit the track name. So I'm going to actually backspace out of this and just name it East. But if you want to name it East 22, you definitely can. You come down here. Point A, you can edit the latch and long. Point B, you can also edit the latch and long. You can enable to snap to boundary. So it more or less snaps the line to the boundary. You can change the heading of the line. So if you wanted to change this, to 180 exactly, you definitely can. Just backspace out of that and just type in 180. As you can see, that kind of changed the length of the line, which doesn't matter a whole lot. Let's pretend we're uh, planting with a DB44. Hit next, and I'm gonna, the length really doesn't matter, but to kind of show you, I'm gonna do 2000 feet and see how that changed the length of the line. So you should be set. And all you have to do here is hit save. And then that line will now be saved. All right, so uh, next I'm gonna kind of show you how to, let's say, let's say we farm this quarter that's east of the original quarter that we're farming right now. Uh, and we just wanted to use this same East 21 headline in this field if we had a field over here. So all you have to do is I have this East 21, this East 21 selected. All I have to do is come up here, hit copy. Which field do you want to associate this? So go find the field that it's associated with. So let's call it, let's say, uh, just find the field name. So let's say it was named uh, uh, Twin Valley. Uh, next, you wanna change the field name. So actually you probably wanna name this West 21, hit save. And now this, uh, Guidance line East 21 is now saved under the field twin valley that would be for this field. So that copy feature is definitely nice. And then you can also export out these guidance lines and you can also just create a PDF of them. So we're just going to create a PDF of just this one guidance line. And we're going to go list boundary shapes. Now that's going to create a PDF down here at the bottom. And you can open that up. And it'll give you the details of that line that you can definitely share with people or print off or whatever you want to do with that. All right, next we're going to get into flags and I'm just going to. Uh, change op center quick so next we'll get into flags and you'll see that there's no flags for this at all so if you want to add a flag all you have to do is hit add hit flag and either that flag can be an area so that can be a shape almost like a field boundary in a way but in a smaller sense, a line, a point, and then it asks you, well, which field do you want to associate this with? And I'm just going to pick a random field here. Um, 
I'm just going to do this top one here with the three lines for for an example. And I'm going to go down to the Monoman lot here, being I'm out of the Monoman store. And I'm just going to drop a point right where our store is at. From there, you want to select the uh, field uh, flag category, and I'm just going to pretend that there's a weed patch here. You can select weeds. You can enter in the notes saying, hey, we need round, round up here. Hit save, and now we created a, a field flag, and that field flag can go into Gen 4 displays, and if you uh, add a flag in a Gen 4 display that will be uh, shown in the LAN portion of Op Center 2. All right. So that kind of goes over all the features in land here. I'll get back to the PowerPoint and kind of transition over to our next uh, topic. Next, we're going to talk about Work Planner. And uh, John Deere actually has a very, very good YouTube channel out there. And I'm actually going to let John Deere explain Work Planner to you guys because I feel like this YouTube video explains Work Planner a whole lot better than I ever could. So I'm going to hit play here and uh, watch this about eight minute video, and this kind of explains Work Planner a little bit better. In this video, we will discuss how to use Work Planner in Operation Center web and mobile, and how to start planned work in a Generation 4 display. Work Planner is a tool in Operation Center that allows you to create work plans online and wirelessly send them to equipment with JD Link connectivity and a Generation 4 display. Work plans can be created in Operation Center web or on the go with Operation Center mobile. Either way, you can seamlessly create work plans from anywhere on any device. For the operator, Work Planner will simplify the in-cab experience by setting up a Generation 4 display quickly and easily. Work plans appear automatically on the display when the machine enters the field. This helps reduce confusion and in-field setup time and ensures you have documentation data you can count on. First, let's take a look at Work Planner in Operation Center Web. You can find Work Planner in the Plan menu. Work Planner is organized by the operation type and year. Notice the drop-down menu to sort by crop year and tabs that allow you to sort by tillage, seeding, application, or harvest. Let's create a work plan we will create a plan for seeding 2022. To create a plan for any operation, select the Add button. Your first step is to add one or multiple fields to the plan. One piece of advice is to use the filters to help make selections based on historical data. This will help you plan work according to your crop rotation and improves your agronomic decision-making. For example, if all the fields planted with corn in 2021 will switch to beans in 2022, select the crop filter, then select corn 2021 to reveal all the fields previously planted with corn. You can use the checkboxes to select the fields or select them from the map. Here we will include two fields in our work plan. On the next page, you'll provide additional information for the plan. This information will vary depending on the operation you have selected. In this example, our next step is to choose a crop. Here, we will choose soybeans and select our variety. For seeding and application work plans, it's easy to set one target rate for all fields and then adjust the rate for specific fields as needed. You can also include field prescriptions. Here we will assign a prescription that we made using Agrian Prescription Creator. The next step is to add machine and implement profiles to the work plan. This helps prevent operator errors 
and reduces the need to set up the equipment information in the display, which can be especially time consuming for high use machines during busy seasons. You can add guidance tracks to the work plan so that the operator doesn't have to worry about setting up auto track. Select the Include All Guidance Tracks button if you would like to allow the operator to choose from all the available tracks for the field or fields. A preview of the guidance lines will help you confirm that you have chosen the correct ones. Adding an operator's name to the job keeps everyone on track and their name and license number will be associated to the data their machine is sending back to Operations Center. Lastly, you can include additional details such as work order numbers and instructions. To finalize your work plan, click the Save button. Your newly created work plan will appear in the Planned Work list. The table previews additional information about the job, such as area, crop, rate, work order numbers, and more. If you want to find or review a particular work plan, use the search feature or use the filter buttons to easily find what you need and refine your plans. From here, you can use the additional functions in Work Planner. Mark the checkbox next to a work plan to make the buttons available. We all know plans can change. You can edit one or multiple plans at a time if needed. To edit planned work, select the plans you would like to edit, then the pencil button. In the drop-down menu, select the detail you would like to edit. Here, we will change our piece of equipment and assigned operator. The arrow button lets you send work plans to a Generation 4 display. Here you will see the default name for the file and you can edit this if you would like. Machines that are able to receive data wirelessly are listed here. Select the machine or machines for the plan then select the Send button. For non-connected machines, click Create without selecting equipment so that work plans can be downloaded from files to be transferred manually using the My Transfer app or a USB. The check button marks the plan as complete. This allows you to remove work from work planner that has already been documented. To delete a plan entirely, select the delete button. Operation Center Mobile syncs up with Operation Center Web so you can create and update work plans on your mobile device whenever you need to. After you sign in, select the plan button much like Work Planner in Operation Center Web, Plan in Operation Center Mobile is organized by the operation type and year. Notice the drop-down menu to sort by crop year and tabs that allow you to sort by operation. Create a new work plan by selecting the Add button. Here is where you enter specific details to help guide your operators in the cab, including guidance tracks, prescriptions, varieties, target rates, and more. Select the down arrow to review the plan's details, make edits, or get driving directions to the field location. The drop-down menu has a few more functions. Use the Send to Equipment button to send work plans wirelessly to a machine for execution in the field. You can also prioritize the order of the work plans in the display or delete a plan if necessary. Let's review how to start planned work in a Generation 4 display. First, be sure to import the data just like you would a setup file, either wirelessly or using a USB. The operator will be prompted to start the work plan when the equipment enters the field boundary. Simply accept and begin work. There are many informational articles to help you use Work Planner. Navigate to the Assistance menu and select Help Documentation. 
If you need assistance or have questions, be sure to reach out to your local John Deere dealer or contact John Deere customer support via the contact support button. In this video, you've learned how to proactively plan field work using Work Planner in Operation Center Web and Plan in Operation Center Mobile. Thanks for watching. In this so we kind of are uh, presenting this to you because uh, work planner is the thing of the future uh, in my eyes. Uh, work planner is kind of a peace of mind type of tool. So you can create your work plan in the winter, like right now. And then if let's say you have a different operator in the seat or a part-time guy, you can send work plans to those tractors so then more or less you have a peace of mind of, uh, knowing that things are being entered in the display correctly uh, one thing to note that the video did not note is once you send a work plan to the tractor or to the combine or whatever you can actually edit those plans so let's say you have a variety in there that you're no longer planting uh, you just have to select that variety change it to the correct variety and go from there. So everything is editable once it's in the monitor. So um, I'm hoping that you guys can all use uh, Work Planner in the future, or see some valuable uh, things with it. One thing to note that I see Work Planner uh, being used right now, uh, even if you don't think your operations are uh, right for Work Planner, is you can just create a Work plan just to send guidance lines. So you can create that work plan, select the guidance lines that you forgot to send to the monitor on your mobile device that you're actually in the tractor of, send those guidance lines to the tractor, and within a few seconds, you have those guidance lines in that monitor and you're ready to go. So if you ever forget anything in a setup file, most likely you can add that to that setup file that's in the tractor. So uh next we're going to kind of transition out of work planner and get into analyze so analyze uh you can analyze your harvest application seeding and tillage uh applications you can run whole farm reports or filter out field, field by field it's an easy way to find your farm totals and averages and then with that you can print off uh reports from your com from your computer or export them out uh harvest reports you can sort out your reports by fields varieties seasons or crop types so as you can see here below i ran a report on a farm in southern minnesota um that's kind of why the yield numbers are a little bit higher than what we're used to seeing but for example here, this DKC, this decal variety, a 59 day, if you come over here, it yielded 255. And what I did here is I selected this average yield box, sorted out this table by highest yielding varieties to lowest, and it just in a few clicks, it sorted this all out for me. So on 288 acres, this decal variety that was a 59 day, or 59 day, 109 day, I should say, uh, yielded 255. So you can easily run these reports pretty, pretty darn uh, fast and easy. Uh, next, this is that same type of report. If you go into analyze, uh, I'll kind of show you this uh, just briefly in the in uh, op center here, but the view I'm going to do harvest season I'm going to do 2021 crop type I'm going to do corn and I'm going to run a fields report. So I ran a fields report and this is running 265 this field up here yielded 265 across the whole board and then that's from highest to lowest and there's many other fields if you scroll down but I just took a quick screenshot of this report. 
Um, next is the application report. Um, and you can filter out this out by fields, work, meaning take mix, uh, and products. So what I did here is I actually filtered this out by dry fertilizer. And right here, it's telling us that potash was the highest uh, used product on this farm that was dry fertilizer. And they used 2.7 million pounds of uh, potash and the target rate was right around 300 pounds an acre. So what I see value in these reports is actually if you buy fertilizer from one location or it could even be multiple locations and you can compare those bills to what you applied with the machines. And yes, it's not going to be dead on accurate, but if it's within a few hundred pounds or a few thousand pounds or however you think is the most accurate or how well your machines are calibrated, it'll get you a, a rough number of what things, uh, what you applied and then you can kind of uh, see, compare that to the bill and uh, and see if, if things are wrong or right or however you kind of want to go about that. So uh, these numbers might be hard to see, but this is actually an application report done on our uh, t and &E test form up in Kennedy. And down here, it kind of sorts it out by date. Our first application was 1034-0, and that was applied on May 10th. And it gives you, hey, our average rate was 5.7 gallons an acre. Next, we did a, a, a spray in application with an R4044 sprayer on June 10th, and the same type of application done on uh, July 15th. Next, we'll kind of go over tanks, tank mix reports. So, example on this teeny test farm again, uh, the soybean herbicides uh, was one of the tank mix names. There's three products in here, applied 76.9 acres, and the last applied of this tank mix was July 15th. So if you're doing a lot of uh, a lot of corn acres with the same same tank mix, it will actually say, "Hey, you apply 3,000 acres of this tank mix versus the 76.8 acres, or 76.9." So I can see these tank mix reports being very very handy. Um, next, transitioning into seeding reports. Down here is a seeding report. And if we had multiple varieties on this field, uh, it would list, let's say we had an 03 along with this 02 here, it would list another line item below this and give you how many acres of this 03 you applied and break it down. So it is it it is uh, a very useful report if you have more than one variety out there. Uh, next, uh, Next, we'll get into harvest reports. And one thing to note, um, and I know that Alan Nemec brought it up in the morning session, but uh, you got to run your variety locator files in the setup, uh, or you got to get your variety locator stuff set up in the file, uh, set up file creator for these reports to generate with the varieties. So, uh, for example, if we had an O3 soybean out here, it would actually list that, hey, this O3 variety was out here. Uh, it yielded 31.2 bushels versus 31.7. And it actually break it down by variety. But like what I mentioned, uh, you got to make sure that you have that variety locator file in place to make it happen. And I can actually go into that and show you that. Uh, let me pull that up here. And we'll go True North Equipment Demo. And I'm going to go to Set a File Creator.
one thing to note when you're doing your. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to do. Uh, generation four. Gen four display and I'm going to do test. Two. Land. And with this variety locator file, what you want to do on your farm most likely is you want to do select all. And if I go search. For an example, this TNE 140 that we had, you come down here and select soybeans. It's already selected, but if you had two crops in the field, it would ask you to select the crop that you want a variety locator file for. If you do not have this box selected, it will not run a variety locator file. And then with that, you can't have any nice harvest reports that you're probably used to seeing. Um, next, we'll get back to the PowerPoint here. Hopefully that clears some things up for you guys. So uh, with that, we're going to uh, transition in the field analyzer. Um, so with field analyzer, it brings in work totals and performance uh, totals into your yield maps now. So down here on this farm, they run two identical 780s. Um, one ran 3.6 3 hours, the other one ran 3.5 hours per or 3.5 miles per hour, sorry. Um, and the throughput of these were about 100 bushel difference. And that's what that 0 0.1 miles an hour difference made. Um, but you can really break down your combines efficiencies. So if you're running like uh, a S680 versus an S780 on the farm, you can really compare differences on how each one performs. And one thing to note, uh, to make these uh, machine performance totals uh, work, you need a JD-Link compatible machine. Uh, if you don't know if your machine's JD-Link compatible, uh, reach out to your local IS consultant and they'll figure it out for you. So next, I'll uh, kind of break down uh, the Dana analyze tool. Um, so I compared uh, a 2021 corn harvest map to the 2021 corn planting map, and you can actually break it down by uh, by rate here. So as you can see, this 31,600 to 32,100 100 yielded uh, 219 bushels an acre. If you go all the way up here. Uh, 33,800 that applied or that yielded 243.888 acres. Uh, based on what I see in this table, this is more or less telling us, hey, we applied the seed in the right uh, areas. Maybe we should use this rec again next year, or the year after, whenever you're going to plant corn again. Um, but yeah, this uh, this table really helps you analyze if recs if uh, planting recs worked or not. Next, and I'll show you an example of this, um, but you can actually analyze uh, different varieties in the field. So on this one particular field, they had a DeKalb 5665, so 160 uh, DeKalb variety versus a new tech variety. And you can simply draw a box around here and uh, you can figure out which areas of the field yielded what. So this top variety, the DeKalb variety, yielded 247. I went right below it, and this new tech variety yielded 228. So that's telling us that this DeKalb variety had an 18.3 bushel advantage. So I'm gonna actually go into uh, op center and kind of show you that I'm not going to show you this that particular field, uh, but I'm going to show you an example of how to kind of do that. I'm just going to go teeny 140. 
I'm going to hit the field analyzer button. Might take a little bit to load here. And I'm going to do compare. In which. Do yield on one side. And then soybean seeding on the other. This is all one variety, so it'll be a little bit different. Um, but what you Oh, what you want to do here is select variety. Once this loads up here, I'll kind of show you how to go about it. Might be just a hair slow, but it will eventually load up. All right, it's slowly coming. Let's give it another few seconds here. So I'm actually going to come in here, see where the select zone box is at. I'm just going to pick, pick the uh, rectangle tool. And I'm going to choose this little area that I want to run a result off of. So if you had two different varieties, you could definitely come in here, sort it out, but this one field only has one variety. So I'm kind of just showing you guys how to use that. So that's more or less telling us over here that we applied 48 pounds of seed, kind of gives you all your seeding totals. Um, once this loads up, it's a little slow today. It's normally not this slow, but it is what it is. Um, Give it another few seconds, I guess. Well, just to move on, if being this isn't loading, they'll give you a, a selected zone here. And what you can do here, you can actually drag this box over to the other area and it will actually load in your totals here, but there's an issue up here and more or less if this ever happens, just refresh your page like this and restart. But for uh, just timing issues, I'm just gonna kind of move forward and go on to the next topic. Um, getting back to Give me one second. All right. So with the uh, field analyzer, you can also run printable reports. So for example here, this would be the harvest map and it gives you your yield, moisture. Uh, I would actually give you your farm name here, but I'd uh, uh, kind of whited that out just to confidential reasons. Um, and then uh, gives you total yield. And then down at the bottom here, it'll actually give you what varieties were planted on this field. The one thing it doesn't do is it actually doesn't break out which varieties yielded what on the field. Uh, I, I believe that those reports are coming in the near future. Um, but it just more or less lists out the varieties that were planted or that were harvested in that field. On the right side is the planting report, and you can see that this is a variable rate planting report just based on the different colors. Red meaning, uh, red actually, they planted down to 11,900, uh, and then red around 36,000 was the top yielding areas. Um, but for example, it kind of gives you total, total applied seeds, uh, prescription totals, applied rate, target rate, prescription rate, elevation, kind of everything that you need to know. 
Next is a uh, fertilizer application report, and this is actually a potash map, and you can actually see on here, I mean, it gives you all your work totals that all the other maps give you, but you can actually physically see where the higher rates were applied, and actually in some areas up here, there was no fertilizer applied, and actually this farm grid samples all their fields at 2.5 acre grids every three to four years, and then they can base their fertilizer recommendations off those uh, grid samples. Uh, next on the right side here is the spraying map. And this is everything that you need to know, pressure, total, uh, target total, apply total, uh, applied rate, applied rate or target rate, elevation, tank mix. It gives you down here what was in your tank mix. And then down here is weather. And there is no way to remove this weather on these reports at this time. It is what it is. You kind of have to deal with it if uh, if you don't want the weather on there, but there's no way to remove it. Um, uh, before I end this, I'm going to kind of show you how to print off these reports. Um, if you go in the field analyzer here, I'm just going to refresh this. And I'm going to go teeny 140. And all that I want to do is print off this harvest report or harvest map. So uh, up here you see the share and export outs. If you uh, hit share and export, you can hit download report. Internet's a little bit slow here today, but it'll eventually download here. Pop that up and this will actually give you the report that you can print off or download or save or however you want to do it, but it's in PDF form. Um, one thing I did kind of skip over and I just noticed it now, I'll go into analyze here and kind of show you how you can run some uh, reports here. So I'm actually going to filter this by field here. And I'm going to go fields. And I'm just going to filter out by these two fields here. And we're going to do both these fields, the teeny 140 and teeny 80, were both soybeans. And this is how you can filter out the analyze reports. Um, and they both had this one variety. So then you could actually see, hey, on both these fields, it combined it yielded 32.5 bushels. Uh, with that, uh, you can also share and export out. And I'm just going to do a detailed PDF version. There's a few different formats and you always have to play around with it to figure out which report is best for your operation. And then you can hit upload here and then this is how uh, these reports are generated. With that, I kind of went over some of the uh, there's there's more to op center, but I kind of wanted to uh, make this short and sweet as as much as possible. Um, but hopefully you learned something with today's session. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to your local IS consultant and they'll help you out. If not, uh, they can definitely reach out to me and I can call you guys with, uh, if you guys have any questions regarding this uh, session. Um, with that, uh, I'm gonna log out here. If you guys have, like what I said, if you have any uh, questions, please feel free to reach out uh, and thanks for your time and thanks for listening.